Huh? Okay. Okay. Maduro is a new president. Excuse me, not, no. Juan Guado. G G U A I D O. It's on page 118. He says, the U.S. says, we don't recognize him. Because he didn't play ball with the U.S. And he's no saint. That's why we have a lot of Venezuelan uh, migrants coming north. It's, it's, it's pretty much a failed state. Nothing works. They are out of resources. And this guy um, doesn't prove to be much of a, not, not a lot of stairs to this guy. Okay, we got, here's a trick question. There are three countries in the northern part uh, that do not speak Spanish. So they cannot be called Latin America. You think all of South America is Latin America? Question? No. We have British Guiana, which is poor as dirt. They're, they're discovering oil. They speak what? English. English, yeah. Very small. We have Suriname. Suriname is Dutch. I hate Dutch. Suriname is Dutch. You have a lot of Chinese and South Asians and the former Dutch colonies coming into Suriname. They're doing better. But they're still poor as dirt, but they're discovering oil. They do bauxite, which is kind of like a, a, just a mineral. They do rice. Then we have French Guiana. Now, what do they speak in French Guiana? French. French love to speak French wherever they are, and it never stops. So what do they have? They have gold. They have the European Space Agency. That's on page 119. The European Space Agency. That's a big deal. All the rockets that uh, Europe European Space Agency launches is launched in French Guiana. So that's that's big. They're doing great. Okay, now let's take a break. On well, 119, we have the Andean West. That's where you get into the Andes Mountains. The Andes Mountains are huge. They go all up and down the backside of South America. Okay, it's called the book is Peru, Ecuador. Bolivia, Paraguay. Now here's a question. Bolivia and Paraguay are landlocked states. What does landlocked mean? They don't have any way to see. They have no connection. Yeah, yeah, they're landlocked. They can't go anywhere. Is that good or bad? That's bad. Bad. Um, Bolivia is trying to make a deal with um, Peru to build kind of a canal going to Peru to the ocean. Peru's like, no, we don't want to do that. So Bolivia really needs, um, it needs a, a, a port. It needs some kind of reach to the Pacific Ocean. So far, nothing's happened. In Peru, there are 50 different indigenous groups, different uh, native tribes in Peru. Okay. Um, how am I doing? Five minutes? You're at uh, 3.30 right now. Oh, okay. I love it. Okay. Gotta hope this up close. All right. In Peru, you have uh, you have the port uh, Calo. You have uh, fishing. You have vegetables. All our fruits and vegetables, if you go to uh, Publix or to Food Giant, food, what is it called? Food Line. Yeah. A lot of those come from Peru. If you have an orange in the summertime, that's Peruvian. Because guess what? What is it in South America now? Is it winter or summer? It's summer right now, right? It's summer, yeah. Sure. It's like July summer, or like August down there. It's hot. They had something on the news where they were fighting fires in, uh, in Peru, in Chile, uh, down there. It's so hot and dry. Yeah, they're having summer. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to go. Um, Cusco is a, was the old Inca Empire in Peru. Uh, the beginning of the of the Amazon is, let's see if I can find it. Cusco? Not Cusco, it's near Cusco. Yeah, in Quitos, I-Q-U-I-T-O-S. It starts, it starts the beginning of the Amazon River. Uh, what was, how do you spell that? I-Q-U-I-T-O-S. I go in Quitos, in Quitos starts as the beginning of the Amazon River. It starts out basically as a creek coming down from the Andes. Then it grows, and it keeps going towards the rainforest. Little feeder streams keep going in it. 
it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And suddenly, at the other end of Brazil, you have the Amazon River, where giant things live in there, and giant snakes, and giant fish, whatever. So you wouldn't want to uh, go swimming. All righty. Uh, let's go to, um, there is a native language left over from the Incan Empire, and I'm going to spell it Q-U-E, Quichon, Q-U-E-C-H-U-N, it's on page 120, and here's a word, it's the lingua franca of uh, Peru. What is uh, Q-U-E-C-H-U-N? Uh, what does lingua franca mean? Lingua, L-I-N-G-U-A, Franca, F-R-A-N-C-A. What is that? Language. The language of exchange, the language of business. Everybody speaks it to get along. The language of, it's, it's a language that everybody does business in. Like French, that owned half the world, colonized half the world basically back in the 18th century. That's where it came from. Everybody spoke French. Or when the English colonized a lot of colonies, everybody spoke English. But when you say the lingua franca, that means the language of use of everybody. You have a language at home, and then you have a language you deal with, say, here. English is the lingua franca here. You speak Spanish at home, you, sp you know, well, Spanish is coming up. Eventually, Spanish will take over, and they'll be pretty much equal. So we'll, we shall see. Um, Peru has gold. The largest copper mine in the world, it's on page 120. Uh, what happens with part of Brazil, and we'll get on Brazil on, on probably Tuesday. They have strip mining, a lot of, uh, with, when it touches Peru and that area, uh, going into the Amazon rainforest, uh, you have strip mining, illegal, and uh, also it goes further up down the Amazon River. That is what Bolsonaro was big on. You know, he was, he was that guy I asked you to write about. Lula, um, Nisha, what is this guy? Lula, something, something, something. He stopped it. So the guy they got in now, the president, uh, he's a good guy. I just, I digress. Okay, Ecuador. They have what is called intermontane. That's valleys and basins, a lot of them. That's where half the population lives. Intermontane, I-N-T-E-R-M-O-N-T-A-N-E. Intermontane valleys, <coughs> basins, and that's where half your population lives. Okay, <coughs> left over from the Spanish. Oh, another reason the Spanish couldn't conquer all the Incas, as, or the, not, the, not the Spanish, but later on, as South America was getting modernized, they still couldn't control the Inca population that much because they lived in the Altiplanos, A-L-T-I-P-L-A-N-O-S. That's high up. You can't, you can't conquer people that live in the mountains, basically. They do their own thing. They're happy. No one's going to bother them. A lot of native peoples are out to live in the Altiplanos. So uh, they're doing great. And mountains are really hard to take over when you want to control people. Plains are not so much. Okay, Ecuador. Now, Ecuador has done something in the news very interesting. Not in your book. They're using the U.S. dollar as currency. This is big, because their currency, they print it with the president's face and maybe his wife on the five, five peso, whatever. No, they're using uh, George Washington, Lincoln, Franklin, and all that stuff. They like U.S. currency, and we let them. So we're backing their currency in Ecuador. That's the only South American state that does that. So that's a trick question. What is the only South American state that uses U.S. court currency? Ecuador. 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 Yeah, Ecuador. Cool. Let them do it. I say all about it. All right. There's another language that's spoken in Ecuador. Well, no, let's back up. The, uh, there's a big port, Cuyaquil. Q U Y A Q U I L G U A Y A Q U I L G U A No G U A Y A Q U I L Guayaquil. It's a big port in Ecuador. It was a dirty city, port city, but it's really becoming a fast-moving port. Guayaquil. Good Google. 